So now let's talk about another type of equation. Okay? Uh, these are called equations that are quadratic in type. So what does this mean? An equation that's quadratic in type or quadratic in form is an equation that when you look at it, doesn't look quadratic. But if you do a little transformation to it, it becomes a quadratic equation. Okay? So that's a, that's the type of equation that we want to deal with right now. So let me let me do this. So recall, I'm gonna rewrite the quadratic formula, but instead of using x, I'm gonna use u. Okay? So let u be any expression, or I, I guess let me not say recall, let me say remark. So let u be any expression. Then, so any expression and A, B, C be real numbers. With A different than zero, then the equation A times U square plus B times U plus C equals to zero has solutions. u equals negative b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2. In other words, uh, you know, you can extend this idea of solving a quadratic equation to equations that are not quadratic because now this u could be something that's not just x, okay? Maybe something that's a little bit more complicated. So the point is that if you have an equation and if you can transform it into something like this, then you can find what u is, and once you know u, then you can maybe use this to solve for x down the line, as you're gonna see in the examples, okay? Once, uh, in the example, this is gonna be more clear. So let me do some examples to see how we can take advantage of this remark. So example, let's solve the following equation. First, let's do something that we could do another way, but it's easier if we do it this way. So let's solve x plus two squared minus 5 times x plus 2 plus 6. So if I had not told you something like this, what you could do is, you know, expand this square, combine like terms, and then write down this as a, as a quadratic polynomial, and then solve it, OK? However, there is a more clever way of doing this, and it's slightly faster, and is to recognize that we can write this equation in this form if we change it a little bit, OK? In other words, there is a, an obvious candidate here for this u. What do you think should that be? What should we let u be equal to so that this turns into something like this? Yes? Uh, x plus 2. Very good. So notice that here we have x plus 2, and then it's showing up here again squared. So if we, if we make a slight substitution, if we let u be equal to x plus 2, OK, we do that, then what does the equation becomes? What does this become? X plus two minus five u plus six equals zero. U squared minus five u plus six equal to zero. Do you understand this? I'm using the letter u, you can use whatever is your favorite letter, u, t, whatever you want. Just use a letter different than the one that we already uh, are using already, okay? So now we turn this into a quadratic equation, honest quadratic equation, the one that you used to see. This is what we mean by an equation that's quadratic in time. Now, this one is fair enough, this is already quadratic to begin with, but now we're going to use this idea to all equations that are really not quadratic, but by making a reasonable substitution, it becomes quadratic. Okay? That's what we mean by quadratic in form. Now, the thing is that you need to be able to spot this, you need to be able to realize that you can do something. Nobody's going to tell you this is quadratic in time. Okay? You need to figure it out. And I'm going to give you some tips as we do more examples. All right. So, once you do the substitution and determine the quadratic, what do we do? We solve it. Now, when we solve it, understand that you're going to get a solution for u. You're going to know what u is equal to. But that's not what we want. We want x. Right? So, how do we do that to help us out? Well, once you know what is u, then you go here. You know what this guy is, and then you can easily solve for us. Does that make sense? So that's the idea. So for example, here there's no need to use a formula. We can just factor this, right? So how do we factor this? Negative two minus 
So u minus 3, u minus 2. So it follows that u is equal to 3 or u is equal to 2. Everybody okay with this? Using zero for the rule and so on. Now remember, don't stop here. A mistake that sometimes students make is that they stop here. But remember, this is u, but I don't care about this. I care about x. This is something that we're doing to help us get to the answer. Okay. Now what do we do? Okay, we put back whatever our substitution is equal to. So u is equal to x plus 2. So we put it. So we get that x plus 2 is 3. It's one equation. Or x plus 2 is equal to 2. And so from here we get x is 1 or 0. OK? Did you understand how we did this? Now, fair enough, this problem could have been done another way, like, like I said at the beginning. You create the parentheses and so on, and then you solve your regular quadratic equation. Let's do examples with problems that are not like this. Okay? But nevertheless, this idea is what uh, we should do. So this is an example of what we call an equation that is quadratic in form. So I could write it, but then, you know, it looks weird. So unless you want me to write it, I'll just say an equation is quadratic in form if after making a substitution, it turns into a quadratic equation. Do you understand that? All right, so one, no, no. Let's do x to the 4 minus a squared minus 9 equals 0. It's now a degree 4 equation. Okay? It's no longer quadratic. Let's do 2x minus 3 square root plus 1. x to the negative 2 minus 3x to the negative 1 minus 40. And let's do x to the two third minus four x to the one third plus three. Okay, so here we have uh, some equations, and I guess before we even solve them, let's make sure that we understand that they are quadratic in form. And to understand that they are quadratic in form is equivalent to say you know, to know what's, what's the substitution that we need to make. What should be, you know, this variable u equal to that we turn this into a quadratic equation. So let's practice that skill first. So first, uh, you know, the hint here is, notice that in, in the example that we did, uh, we let u be equal to x plus 2. We didn't make it something else. Now, uh, my advice to you is the following. Try to look at the equation and try to see if you find an expression containing the variable, not just a number, but containing the variable, so that when you square that expression, it also appears in your equation. Okay? If you can find that, that's your substitution. For example, here I see x plus 2, and if I square x plus 2, it's in there. Okay? So that means that I should let u be equal to x plus 2. Okay? So let's see in the second one. Can you see something so that when you square it is in there? Yes? Very good. So notice that here, if you square this guy, you get x to the fourth. Do you understand this? So here, you should let u be equal to x squared. How about number three? Do you see something so that when you square it, it appears in there? Square root of x, right? So this guy. If I do square root of x, if I let u equal square root of x, what is u squared? What would be u squared? X. x. And I see the x in here. Do you understand this? OK, how about number four? Very good. This guy right here. Notice that if we let u be equal to x to the negative 1, when you find u squared, remember when you square when you square an exponent, what you do is you multiply an exponential, you multiply the exponent, right? So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So you get your x to a negative 2. Good. And how about number 5? x to the 1 third. x to the 1 third. This guy right here. 
if we let u be equal to x to the 1 over 3, then u squared will be x to the 1 over 3 squared, which multiplies so 1 over 3 times 2, that will give you 2 thirds. Okay? So these are two I have inside, and moreover, you already know the substitution. Okay? So, so we managed to set it up like so we managed to set it up so that it looks sort of like a quadratic without the x squared and the normal x you just take um e like the x that's next to b. Okay. Yes. Uh, well from the least x term, but like in this situation you've always taken the variable that's right next to the Because remember you just need to look for something so that when you square it it's also there. If you take the whole thing when you square it, you're going to get 9x. You know, I'm not talking about the whole thing. I'm talking about the variable that a couple of focus can be. Uh -huh. Yeah, but uh, the question is, should you take the whole thing or not? It really depends. What if this what depends? What if this was 9x? I mean, you don't have to, but if this was 9x, then it's easy to, to have taken the entire thing, right? So, you know, it really depends. So I want to say... <laughs> no, you know the number. Sometimes, sometimes it makes it simple. It, it would be simpler if you if you take you know, just look for something so when you square it, it shows up in there. That's what you need to do. It turns out in this example we didn't have to include the number. Okay, but sometimes you may. Okay, so okay, let's see. Let's do it. So solution. Let me see, for number two, we have x to the four minus eight x squared minus nine equals zero. So it's clear here that we should let u be equal x squared. Um, if we do that, then what is u squared equal to? What will be u squared? x to the four. And you know, the good thing is that this guy, oops. the good thing is that this guy is here, okay? So we're good to go. Okay, so who can tell me what's the new equation that we obtained after we made the substitution? Okay, u minus nine equals it. Do you understand this? And now solve this as usual. We already know how to solve any quadratic equation. So now we solve. So what can we do here? So this is u minus nine u plus 1, so that means u is equal to 9, or u is equal to negative 1. Are these the solutions that we're looking for? So we don't want u, we want x, right? So what do we need to do now? We need to put back whatever u was equal to. So u was x squared, so we get these two equations, x squared equals 9, or x squared equals negative 1, and now we solve. So this one is a little quadratic, but we can do it quickly by using square root, right? So what are the solutions from there? So plus or minus 3. And the other one, what are the solutions? Plus or minus i. Good. And as expected, we had, we, we had a degree 4 polynomial, and we found the four solutions, right? Positive 3, negative 3, i, negative i. Okay? Questions? All right, so let's see the next one. We have 2x minus 3 square root of x plus 1 equals 0. And we already saw that the reasonable substitution is u equals square root of x. So if we do that, then u squared is just x, right? And again, here it is. So in business. Who can tell me what's the equation that we obtain? Yes? 2u squared minus 3u plus 1. Plus 1 equals 0. Questions on this? Do you know how to transform the equation? So step 1 is recognize that you should be using this technique. Step, step 2 is find the correct substitution. And 3, make sure that you understand how to do the substitution, how to write the equation. Okay? Now, at this point, you are in quadratic realm, do it however you want, okay? Again, I always have to see if I can factor. So, two numbers of product is 2, and the sum is negative 3. We can find it, right? Negative 2 and negative 1. So, 
to do that. Let's say, let me refresh uh, the AC method. So that would be negative 2u minus u. Then in the first pair, I'm going to factor out 2. So 2u, so we get u, u minus 1. And in the second pair, I'm going to take out a negative. So if we get u minus 1, and now we factor out u minus 1. OK? All right, so this factors as u minus 1 times 2u minus 1. Everybody OK? So we get two solutions for u. So u equals 1, or what's the other one? 1 half. 1 half, good. But remember, don't stop here. We want x, so we have to put back. So u was square root of x. equals one half, and then uh, we finish solving, okay? So to solve this, even though we haven't talked about it, so if the square root of x is equal to one, what do you think that means? Then we square both sides, right? So that means x itself is one. And the square root of x is one half, then what is x? Equal. Well, what I'm doing is I'm squaring both sides to cancel the value, okay? Now, keep in mind, if this would have been, for some reason, after we factor, in mind, it was a plus, right? Then what would have been your u here? If this was a plus, what would be your u here? Negative. So what is it? Negative one half. So what would you say in that case? We will have this, the statement negative square root, uh, square root of x equals negative one half, right? You will have a line like this. What would you say in there? What's x? It's still one fourth. No solution. Square root is always possible, oh. right? It's impossible. There is no way that you can get square root of something equals a negative number. Do you understand this? So it could be that when you're doing these things, you know, one of the equations will give you something, but then the other one, if you get something that doesn't make sense, that just means that, that doesn't, that's not a solution. So you just get whatever you think of this side. And if both sides don't give you anything reasonable, then there's no solution to the problem. Remember, equations may not have solutions. Okay? So keep that in mind. Be careful. All right. So that's this one. Any questions? Okay, so let's see, how about the other one? Do you know how to understand negative exponents? Yeah. So here we have x to the negative 2 minus 3 times x to the negative 1 minus 4. So remember, so recall, if you have a to the negative k, this is 1 over a to the k. Okay? So you have a negative exponent, you can write as a fraction and then change the sign in the denominator of this point. Okay, so we recognize, instead of doing that, we recognize this as quadratic in type. What's, what was the substitution? What can we let u be equal to? Uh, x to the negative 1. x to the negative 1. So then what's u squared? So let's calculate it. So x to the negative 1 squared, right? And then that would be negative 2 because you have to multiply the exponent, okay? Negative 1 times 2. Okay, so who can tell me the equation? What do we get? Yes? Um, uh, u squared minus 3u minus 4 is equal to 0. Good. Does everybody understand how to, how to write this? Okay. Can we factor this? Yes. How? Um, that would be u minus 8 times u plus 5. Good. So again, uh, you know, if the question is to solve this, you do this equation however you want. But remember, if you can factor, do it because it's super quick and easy, OK? Don't throw the, I mean, if you want to use the formula here, by all means, but I would not recommend that, OK? All right, so we get u equals 8 or U equals, what's the other one? Negative 5. Negative 5. OK? 
Okay, so now we put back what u is equal to. So as x to a negative 1 is equal to 8, or x to a negative 1 is equal to negative 5. So if x to a negative 1 is 8, what is x? I want to 1 over 8. Good. So remember, x to a negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over x. Okay? So if 1 over x is equal to 8, print both sides, and then x is 1 over 8. You understand this? And then from here, what is x? Uh, negative 1 over 5. That's right. Okay. Questions? So, you know, this, these equations are technically not quadratic equations, but we are solving them like so, right? So that's, that's what we mean by quadratic form. Okay. I guess the last one. X to the 2 over 3 minus 4. X to the 1 third plus 3. And we already spotted what substitution to make. So what should we do here? Let u be one to the negative, uh, one to the, sorry, x to one third. x to the one third, okay. If we do so, then what is u squared? x to the two things. So x, so, okay, let me do the steps here. It will be this guy squared, multiply, so you get two thirds, and here it is. So we are in business. Okay, so what equation do we get? U squared minus four u um, plus three plus three equals zero. Okay, can we factor this? Let's see. Somebody in the last row, can you guys tell me how to factor this? You haven't told me anything. How do we factor this? Uh, u minus one and times three. U minus one. U minus three. Good. So was u equal to? One or three, right? Okay, so that means x to the one third is equal to one, or x to the one third is equal to three. So, how do we find x? What do we need to do? Exactly, so we cube both sides, right? So, remember, this is one of the same thing as cube root of x. In other words, you can rewrite this as the cube root of x. And if you want to figure out what x is, then we cube both sides. Why? Because this is going to kill the value, right? You just raise both sides to the power and match the index. I'm stressing this because the next section is solving equations, radical equations, equations that contain radicals, OK? And this is the idea. We get x equal 1. And over here, what do we get? 27. 27. Good. All right. Questions? Do you understand? So make sure that you practice how to spot quadratic form and the substitution. This is really the, the, the challenging part, I would say. Challenging quotation. 